We are the lab doctors. I'm Amanda. I'm Dorothy. And I'm Zhao Yong. We are biomedical researchers who realize we still have a lot to learn about science. So why not join us on this quest? Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lab Doctors podcast. So today we're going to be talking about this thing called Jomo. Have you heard of it? Joy of missing out. Oh, <laughs> instead of FOMO. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we've all heard of FOMO or if you haven't heard of it, it's fear of missing out. FOMO is a form of anxiety or other unpleasant emotions that kicks in when you feel excluded. So JOMO mm. or J-O-M-O is the joy of missing out. So some define it as the feeling of contentment with one's own pursuits and activities without worrying over the possibility of missing out on what others may be doing. Mm. Or it's the enjoyment of periods of disconnection from others or from social demands. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the researchers from the study that I will be talking about later indicated that it is important to distinguish between loneliness or the perceived lack of connectedness which is generally linked with significant negative and health consequences. Okay. So JOMO, on the other hand, is the desire or preference for disconnectedness for a period of time, mm. which is presumably associated with better well-being. So my next question for you is, was there a time you felt FOMO or JOMO in the past week? Oh, past week. I was going to go into like history and like, yeah, FOMO probably like in oh, sure, my yeah, jeans. Whichever. <laughs> Jomo, hmm, past week. Actually, okay, yeah, maybe we'll go with the like teens thing. Like, so when do you grow out of it? Or like, when do you start feeling the opposite? Oh, when I was a teen, I feel like that term FOMO didn't come out yet. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's just you feel like if you got no friends, then you are like a loser in school. But there's also like if you see people hanging out together and then they never invite you. Yeah, then you feel the formal. La. But yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. the term isn't there yet. La. Yeah. You yeah. just feel like an outcast. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess the term is lonely. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's not lonely. I mean, they the distinguish case. it, but like, yeah. Um, Joy of missing out probably like second year uni. Mm. Then I like became, yeah, I just don't want to do things anymore. I must say uni was the turning point for me as well. I used to be very scared of like not being part of a group. Honestly, I still am a bit, but at least there is more balance, I feel. Mm. Mm. But definitely like as a teenager. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, for me, it varies like day to day or like even one thought to the next. So I don't know, sometimes I, I'll see people like post on social media about like them hanging out with their friends, like yeah. trying some new place yeah. to eat or something. And then I'll feel a bit of like, oh, maybe I wish I had like friends to like go out to these places with. Yeah. But then at the same time, like I can go by myself. <laughs> so then I realized actually I just want to go do the thing instead of like actually be around people. So but I don't it, know. But it depends. Like some things you need to do it with a group of people. Like what? Escape room. <sighs> I guess I wouldn't do that alone because I'm scared of the experience, yeah, you know, so. not because of the, I, I think a lot of the things that like last time I used to be scared of doing alone, I realized it's actually not that bad. Like eating alone, going yeah, to eating alone. watch a movie by myself. Oh, I don't think I can do that yet. Going to a concert by myself. Oh, I can't do that. Like, actually, it's not really a big deal that I realized. So like, I think now more and more I'm like, oh yeah, I, I actually want the experience more than like the people which sounds so mean but mm, you gotta try the movie thing especially if it's a movie that you really really want to watch and that nobody wants to watch with you oh, That's no, no, no. even if people want to watch with you it's like if you really want to watch it you should watch it like alone Why? so that you can get the full experience without like all these people around you like commenting on it. Like, oh my god do you but see but if that? you want to comment I, I cannot talk to anybody why do you want to comment in the movie I mean, like, if you have something that you're very excited about talk and about then, it after the movie oh my god sorry I cannot I don't like when people talk to me in serious movies. I cannot watch movies with Dorothy, I guess. <laughs> Wait, we did watch together before. Did we? Probably. Oh. At some point. <laughs> but like, maybe I wasn't I sitting remember. right beside yeah, you. Maybe it was. It was or maybe it. I just wasn't excited about that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to remind you about Tenet, but like I was sitting next to you and you know, someone oh was God, sitting next to me. You constantly annoyed me because he constantly annoyed you. And I'm just like, I'm trying to watch this movie with no subtitles. It doesn't make sense. I just want to highlight that it wasn't me that was annoying. 
I don't watch popcorn. If I want that, I would have got that in. Yeah, that's why nowadays I watch movies alone. Because like whenever I want to watch in the cinema, it's like something I want to watch. So like, you know, I'll go alone. Uh, true, yeah. true, true. But sometimes I get lost, so I need to ask people what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> you are the reason that he's watching alone now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, this, this went on for too long. <laughs> Before we talk about JOMO, let's talk a bit about what the literature currently says about FOMO. Because people actually study FOMO. Mm-hmm. So scientists suggest that the root cause of FOMO is social comparison. So it's this tendency to socially compare ourselves to others as we are trying to understand our own identity and place in the world. So Mm. you may fixate on what other people are doing instead of being fully present about where you are at in your life. So current research has shown that FOMO has been associated with things like stress, sleep problems and fatigue. In terms of social media use, it is unclear whether FOMO is associated with increased or decreased social media use. Mm. And on the topic of social media, several groups have highlighted that social media may be good in the sense that it provides hope and inspiration to drive people for self-improvement. So you see someone that like is maybe better at you in some aspect. So it's like a inspiration thing. Okay. Fitspo kind of vibes. But in contrast, social media could also promote negative self-evaluation. So thinking we are less cool or less important. Yeah. So to date, most of the research has focused on FOMO and well-being. But some experts suggest that JOMO is the emotionally intelligent antidote to FOMO. Yeah. Sounds correct. So in its essence, it's supposed to focus on being present and content with where you are at in life. Mm. What's with the face? I, I don't picture myself as someone that's emotionally intelligent. So when they say if you like or you practice Jomo, you're emotionally intelligent. I'm like, am I? Mm. I, say, I think it's like good that someone is aware of what they want. Oh, okay. So eventually you're prioritizing yourself and I think that is like... More healthy. Healthy, yeah. Mm. So it'll be the antidote, I guess. Mm, We'll find out. Oh no. (laughs) Okay, so researchers from the Washington State University led by Chris Berry aim to understand people's self-reported experience of JOMO in relation to their use of social media and other indicators like their personality, mental health and overall well-being. Mm-hmm. There were two parts to this study. The first is what they called a variable-centered approach. So for the first part, they recruited 507 participants and made them fill out multiple surveys. So including a JOMO survey, a FOMO survey, loneliness scale, self-compassion scale, social media use during daily activities, mini big five personalities. So remember that's your ocean, the mm-hmm. openness, conscientiousness, some blah, blah, blah. Okay. And social interaction, anxiety scale, and life satisfaction scale. Mm. So I won't ask you to guess because it seemed like basically everything was linked to everything in this part. Oh. Which is why there's two parts to this study because the first part was like not really that great, but they still like reported it. Okay. So the first unexpected finding, which made them question construct validity, which is like how valid this tests are, is that JOMO was actually positively correlated to FOMO. So the more FOMO you experience, the more JOMO you experience. Supposedly. But that's the thing. So like, how do you study it if it's like both? You don't know like, so because they make you do like a lot of other tests, right? Yeah. So then it's like, how do you say that like one is connected to JOMO and one is connected to FOMO if they are both positively correlated, you know? Mm. Okay, so this is contrary to previous literature suggesting a divergence between the two. Mm. Okay, but here are like the overall patterns. FOMO showed stronger association with social media use during daily activities and social anxiety. Mm. FOMO was negatively associated with self-compassion, whereas JOMO had no correlation with Mm self-compassion. There was also no correlation between JOMO and extroversion which a lot of people hypothesize that like people who enjoy missing out are generally not extroverted, but there was no correlation there. Mm -hmm. And this suggests that there are different reasons why people opt to miss out on social activities or to Mm -hmm. spend time in solitude. So it's not just because someone is extroverted or introverted. Mm -hmm. So the authors propose that JOMO may involve a sense of relief from social interactions for some individuals, whereas FOMO is characterized by distress from being excluded from activities. So because of these mixed results, the team designed a second study, which was a more person-centered approach. So just now they made people do a lot of tests and then they just like compare the variables. 
But here, the difference is that they used most of the same surveys, but they divided the participants into different groups before analyzing the association to other factors. Okay, so they made people do the JOMO scale, the loneliness scale, and then the social media use. And then they grouped them into four different categories. And then from these four categories, it's trying to like create a profile for each one. And then they correlated that with the different scales that they use. So they say that like it's a better assessment of like the kind of profile that you are and its correlation with other things. What they found is that people with high JOMO and social media engagement and moderate loneliness reported high self-esteem and life satisfaction, but also higher levels of depression, anxiety and stress. Huh? How can they be like self-satisfied and... Mm. Those with low JOMO and loneliness and social media activity were associated with high positive indicators and low negative indicators. So like high self-esteem, satisfaction and mindfulness and low depression, anxiety and stress. Makes sense. Does it? Okay. I, I just want to hear what you mean by that. It's like regardless of human interaction, I'm fine. So it makes sense that you're the most well-adjusted person. It's so paradoxical, but yeah, we'll talk about maladjustment a bit as well. Mm. Okay. I don't think people who experience JOMO are well adjusted. <laughs> so the last major finding is that level of loneliness seemed to be the best indicator of maladjustment, better than JOMO. Your sense of connectedness or like whether you feel lonely or not is more important for like your self-assessment of like how adjusted you are. Whereas high JOMO was connected to higher distress. So like what Zhao Yong says, like if you are, if you have a tendency to experience it, you are more likely to be distressed by it. Mm. as well. So this study highlighted the paradoxical nature of JOMO and it's not as straightforward as people think, which is like FOMO is bad and JOMO is good. Uh -huh. And JOMO may function differently for individuals based on their personality traits and current environment. So what the authors propose is that JOMO is not like a personality trait and it's not like a stable state thing, but it's more a momentary phase of like needing to disconnect. And like the same person might feel it like differently at different times. So it's not mm. like you are like always high JOMO, or like low JOMO or whatever. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, my theory is JOMO is a coping mechanism for FOMO. Mm. So like you're experiencing FOMO and then you convince yourself that you're happy being alone and that's why you experience JOMO. Mm. Of course, there are people, there are times where you need to unwind and be alone. Mm. Yeah. But like, I feel like that explains why people who experience high FOMO can experience high JOMO as well. Yeah. Because it's a coping mechanism. The antidote. Oh my no, God. No, not antidote. It's like coping mechanism. It doesn't heal you. Uh, it just makes you- It's like Panadol. It's yeah. delusional. It's delusion. <laughs> Anesthetic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Like, for example, mm -hmm. in the recent Blackpink concert. <laughs> <laughs> we are like dating when we record this. So like, I will be formal because I'm not in the standing pit because they look so near the celebrities, uh -huh. yeah. the idols. But then after I read the news where mm -hmm. like people are complaining that they're not in the standing, like they're, they're suffering in the standing pen because they cannot see, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. Then I'll be like, yeah, that's so great. I wasn't there. Jomo. <laughs> <laughs> but deep down, I'm like, oh. You I still wish you were there. I kind of still wish I was like. <laughs> you want to experience it for yourself because yeah. you don't know. Yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah. Mm, I think it's a fad, <laughs> but okay. Huh? Jomo is a fad. As in like, I don't think people understand it. And I think that's what makes it hard to study because like all this is at the end of the day is self-reported. Yeah, I think the, the definition is probably different for different people. Yeah. So Zhao Yong, when you feel JOMO, mm -hmm. do, do you, you feel JOMO? Do you think it's JOMO or do you think it's just like compensating for FOMO? Um, I wouldn't say it's compensating for FOMO. Nowadays it's like, but would you rather... You know, mm. it's like, huh, but would you rather really spend your Friday night out until like don't know what time and then I like, reach home at like 12 and then you want to like do stuff but you don't feel like doing stuff anymore because you need to sleep because you're old and then like... I think that's the difference. <laughs> it's not like you are like, oh, I want to miss out. It's like, no, I, I just want to do what I want to yeah, do. Yeah, I'd rather do what I want to yeah. do. So, so that's the different thing for me now. It's like you're not consciously thinking about like, oh, I'm missing out mm. intentionally. But... Like why I get the whole like, oh, um, Jomo is just copium for like FOMO. Oh, copium is, is... Oh yeah, uh, it's like a it's coping mechanism, basically. Yeah, it's opium. like the amalgamation like, yeah, yeah. for coping and opium. opium. So it's like a drug. It's a drug. Mm -hmm. Not an actual drug. Yeah, yeah. This is just a metaphor. It's a... 
It's a metaphor. The new term for yes. coping. <laughs> um, but um, why I get there is because I think in my late teens, I would experience like super like strong FOMO. Mm. And then I'll convince myself that I hate these people anyway. Oh. So like, like yeah, yeah. Then then I would like, oh, it's fine. I'm like, happier being alone or like something like that. Mm. But it's actually very sad. <laughs> yeah, 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 I would feel that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. So, but then like, yeah. Then when I went into uni, then I started like realizing that actually, yeah, there are people that I don't really want to hang out with. And then like, then then like. Yeah. So you don't feel like you're missing out. Yeah. Then you start understanding that actually no, this is just how I operate or like this. Is, it's fine that you are not hanging out with these people that seem cool or whatever because they suck anyway. Like they really, like you truly understand that they suck now. Mm. And then you're like, oh, then it's fine. Like I'm fine not hanging out with y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you truly understand it. Then it becomes like, I feel real dromo. Like instead of just coping with your formal. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So here's where I wanted to end. So if you're interested in embracing the philosophy of Jomo, which I think like the philosophy and like the actual meaning of it is very like liberating. So like just do it for the right reasons, basically. But mm -hmm. here are some tips that you may find useful. So the first is be intentional with your time. So schedule things that are important to you instead of just filling your day and using the remaining time that you have to do what you want to do. Mm. So the next is to give yourself permission to live in the present. So if you're having a bad day, take it easy or treat yourself. And if you achieve something, take a moment to embrace it or celebrate. Mm. Okay, the next thing is to embrace tech-free time. So mm. unfollow people who trigger FOMO. Oh, <laughs> Do you, do you just say no? <laughs> Tech free time means like what? I can't play my Switch. No, I, I think like social media. Yes. Then social media free time. <laughs> no, but actually I think tech free may be good also. Like maybe don't game so much. Unless it's Animal Crossing, I guess. <laughs> Pet Lasso reference. Okay, so but anyway, unfollow people who trigger FOMO or cause you any type of negativity. Set daily or weekly limits on social media apps. And I guess this isn't relevant anymore because the next one was disconnect with technology and spend time doing things you enjoy, like cooking or spending time outdoors. But what if I enjoy gaming? <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. Okay, the last two. So the second last one is practice saying no. You do not always have to go for that event or take that phone call or say yes to your friend who wants to meet up with you. You don't always have to do it. You mm -hmm. can, like everything in moderation, basically. Is this a therapeutic for people who have FOMO? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like don't tips. Don't go out with people just for the sake of like not wanting to miss out. Go out because you actually want to. And if you don't want mm -hmm. to, then just say no lah. Mm, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That's that's where that's how I see it. Which is why I say it. it's like I fully agree with the philosophy of Jomo, but don't do it for the wrong reason. Mm. Okay, so the last one is slow down. So think before you speak, embrace peace and quiet, and spend time to reflect on your own thoughts and emotions. Mm. Yeah, so those are the tips that I have for you. Mm. And as usual, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Spotify. A like and a comment will really help us out. You can also follow us on our social media, Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, and feel free to DM us any questions. Alternatively, you can email us at thelabdoctors at gmail.com. We'll post the links in the episode description so you can check that out if you're interested. Thank you. I was just thinking of the song that I wish that I could be like the cool kids. Oh, uh, oh yeah, cool, it's cool just, kids. Just don't be like that song. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>